Coming up right now, it could soon be legal to cheat on your spouse in New York. We've got the details. Also coming up, North Carolina officials are warning residents there could be bears under their homes, and but it's okay. Mm, a little bit later on, he's known as the Atlanta Magnet Man who uses a bike rig with a giant magnet to remove about 410 pounds of screws, nails, and sharp metal all off the streets. Daily Flash starts right now. Get ready for trending news and entertainment. This is Daily Flash with your host, Andrea Jackson and Mitch English. The fun starts right now. This is Daily Flash. Hi, everyone. I'm Andrea Jackson. I'm Mitch English. We're welcoming you to Daily Flash, our midweek edition. So happy mm -hmm. to have you here. And Matt Doolittle also joins us. Matty, how you been, man? Good. I, I got a question, though. And I, I don't know if any of you guys are gym rats out there or whatever, but I've tried to get back in there. Once the wedding's done, I got to, you know, get, getting all that, the partying out of my system. Sure. Can we stop taking videos and your selfie videos at the gym when I'm just trying to do a workout and yeah. now it's turned into a fashion show? Yeah, I'm with you on that one, yeah. It is so unnerving to be like, I don't want this mess while I'm at the gym, even though you look like you're trying to be a model while we're here. Uh -huh. and, and that's why I don't go. I just that's can't it, stand yeah. it. The people are doing that. That's why. That's why I don't go to the gym. <laughs> <laughs> it was so bad they had to put signs up in the bathroom, though, saying you can't take photos oh, in there and all this because guys are like modeling and stuff and you got you know grandpa walking by and you know he's completely yeah, naked yeah, well, and, well yeah <laughs> okay and it happened to me one time right i thought i had no idea those cameras you shuffle like the I best shuffle, of them i do right. at what point is enough enough with the selfies and the self videos and the yeah i don't think it'll ever stop i think it's especially the, the fact that the way social media is now is mm -hmm. that you know you want to show everybody your life it's like sometimes just it's okay. Stop. Well, well, now we're all performers. No one's an yeah. audience member. That's a very good point. So, I mean, everybody's looking for the their star moment. So nobody's willing to actually <laughs> sit back and watch and enjoy this stuff. Um, overrated attractions in the U.S. What do you think they are? Oh, wow. Top uh, five overrated but, attractions. Oh, uh, wow. Jeez. We're not talking theme parks oh. so much. Just like landmarks or attractions that you think you should go see. Uh, well, first thing I would say, like the, like the biggest ball of yarn or something like that. You know, like trivial things okay. like that. Sometimes All right. they're, they're usually a disappointment. You're like, that's okay. it. Okay. Uh, Lombard Street in San Francisco. Oh, that's yeah. that crooked, that crooked one. Did okay. that. It was. Yeah, you can, yeah, yeah, but why? Because yeah, you can look at a picture and that's the yeah. same day. Yeah. You're like, okay. Well, then yeah, you yeah, drive yeah. down it and you're like, uh, about halfway down, down it, you're like, I'm done over it. That's it, leave. right? Yeah. Uh, Times Square. Yeah, uh, yeah. You gotta do it once. May, I would never do it on New Year's Eve. Oh, no way ever. Uh, Plymouth Rock. I've never been there, so I don't know. Las Vegas. Uh, and well, there's so much to do out there. Yeah. That they, they know that they, uh, they, they promote. That's their promotion. It's like, well, what can we do now to bring people here that's not there? Yeah. So I can I can see that. And but, number one on their list, Mount Rushmore. They I've say it's smaller. I've always wanted to see this. I've never done it. Everybody that ever seen it goes, well, it's not as big as I thought it would <gasps> really? be. It's really? It's much smaller. As everybody has yeah. told me about that, uh, that have been there. So it's not as grandiose as you think it is. It just looks. It seems like picture. it would be ginormous. At least that's yeah. how they make it look in the movies. I can't tell you. I've not seen it yeah, either. Yeah, me neither. So I'd love to go. I guess we yeah. have a travel day we, we have to go do. All right. For more than a century, it's been a crime to cheat on your spouse in the state of New York. But adultery may now be legal in the Empire oh. State thanks to a proposed bill that would do away with the old law that comes with three months of jail time. Adultery bans are still in the books in several states across the United States, though charging and convicting someone has rarely happened. They were traditionally enacted to reduce the number of divorces at a time when a cheating spouse was the only way to secure a legal split. Only about a dozen people have been charged under New York's law since 1972, and of those, about five cases resulted in convictions. Oh, wow. Most, what are you in for? <laughs> I cheated uh, on my wife. I cheated on my wife. Most states have, oh, you're about to cheat again. <laughs> most, most states have adultery laws, classify them as misdemeanors, but Oklahoma, Wisconsin, Michigan lists adultery as a felony offense. <laughs> Felony, a felony. A felony ever, offense. You know, and I think it, some are saying it's archaic. Uh, you know, a little archaic that, that mm -hmm. these laws are still on the books, and it, a lot of times they, you know, they're it happens, and nobody they're never really charged. Yeah. 
Uh, and then also too, well, where's daddy going? Well, he's going to jail because he cheated on mom. All right, you know. I mean, As that's if it's my not thing. bad enough that you cheat in your relationship, yeah. and then the you know the kids, and it ends in divorce. Now you got to admit that you're going to you know the Gray Bar Hotel for it. And I, I think what should happen here is like these reality shows should actually take over the law. It's like okay, we'll, we'll handle all the policing of cheating people. <laughs> we'll make a reality show out of it. <laughs> well, right? cheaters, right? Cheaters, they cheaters is a perfect example. They're all, I love watching. I get sucked into that. Do show. you really? I, yeah. I I'll I'll watch it. think, yes, it's yeah. the exact it's, same it's, scenario when, every, every time. time. When you finally realize every single one of them is in Dallas, they're all also, in Dallas. Because yeah. the first time I flew to Dallas, you know how I knew? I was like, oh, those buildings are on cheaters. No. And they do, really? all, they do yeah. all the episodes out of like a oh warehouse in gosh. Dallas. You know, the guy is, oh, uh, his, his great grandfather is. Uh, is a, uh, a legend, Gone with the Wind guy. He was in Gone with the Wind. Oh, um, um, uh, not Marlon Brando. Um, Red Butler, uh, the guy, yeah. who, Clark Gable. Clark Gable. Clark Gable. Gable. That's his like grand grandson or no something way. like that. The guy Joey, whatever. That anyway, started cheaters. Some one of those. That's what I know. There's a connection between those. What two. a legacy for Clark I Gable. Guess. <laughs> well, wildlife officials in North Carolina are warning residents to be aware of an unusual hazard bears waking up underneath houses. Hmm. Officials have noticed an uptick in bears making their winter homes under home houses and decks. Wildlife officers have been known to relocate these furry tenants, except for mama bears with young cobs. Some experts say that the fun part of the job is to convince a homeowner that it's wow. okay to have a bear live underneath their house for the winter. Bears usually vacate their winter dens voluntarily around late March and early April. So they're hibernating. They're just they're, yeah, they're crashed much, out yeah. down, down there. Uh, it would be scary though. I mean, knowing well, what day is he going to wake up? And then I yeah. might have my dog outside there. Yeah. It's still it's neat. That's but it does show yeah. you how much we're encroaching on their really their land if well, you look at it. We have bears in our neighborhood mm -hmm. that wander through and I know you've had that yeah. experience before. It's so fascinating to see them. It never gets old. Right. Yeah, to the point where, you know, like uh, I literally uh, just last week I caught my seventh raccoon and we, we uh, at, in our backyard, we live in a neighborhood. And so I constantly take him out to this, the woods and let him go out there. It's a whole thing. But, uh, but you're know, like, I'm used to like raccoons, but yeah. you think a bear yeah. is something you don't normally ever see. Mm -hmm. And they go, well, there it is walking through our neighborhood. Yeah, it's kind of cool. Well, a Georgia man, dubbed the Atlanta Magnet Man, is using his bike and heavy duty magnets to pick up hundreds of screws and other metal bits off the roads. His new mission was motivated after one too many flat tires. So, so far he's spent about $1,000 on high-powered magnets that he's attached to a trailer. He also uses a broom to help with the excess street debris. His Instagram page is used to document all of his cleanup efforts and he's taken about 410 pounds of junk wow. off the street including a bullet and a construction crane, which he recently <laughs> gave to what? a local scrap metal artist. The street sweeping guardian is now looking to purchase a bike lane sweeper that can pick up other items like glass and gravel. Now, these are the people that are making a difference in the world. Because number one, he's probably like, well, I'm a biker. I want to go out and ride a bike. And why not? really do something that's going to help out the community all at the same mm -hmm. time. So I love seeing and love hearing about this sort of thing. And the guy should be sponsored first off, like a company oh, yeah. to say, hey, you know, hey, I'm like going to get you a new bike. a hardware store would be 100%. perfect. A recycling place. There's so yes. many places to do that. And these are the people I, you know, uh, he was ingenious enough to like, well, I'm riding my bike all the time. Why can I build this thing? And, and it yeah. works. So God bless him. And we need more people like that. 100%. What we might not need is uh, naked bowlers. I'm would you agree with that? I would agree with you on that um, one. Well, there is a Pennsylvania group that they have actually announced bowlers will be able to go nude at its upcoming, this is the name of the title, Balls Out Bowling event. <laughs> yeah. Uh, a Pittsburgh nudist group announced that they're going to secure a location. They've done it for their Bowling in the Buff. It's happening April 28th. Nudity will be required with one exception. Mm. Women can wear bottoms. Oh, A towel nice. and a bag will also be required for the event. <laughs> Anyone who wants to get naked uh, will need to actually purchase the $25 ticket in advance. Okay. The event open to bowling fans of all skill levels who are at least 18 years of age or older. Now, the group stressed that safety and privacy will be essential. That means no photography, no video recording uh -huh. will be allowed. And if you're wondering at home, sexual activity is not permitted, though you probably will wind up in the gutter either way. Oh, right? Nice. On the, uh, I know, I know. And those people that do the granny roll where you got to get that's all That's what I was going to say. That's the, that's the fear one right there. There that's is the, no pose in bowling no. that will ever look no. good. Nick, Nick I'm sorry. Those hand dryers are going to get overused. It's going to be just mass hysteria. Uh,
I don't, I don't even want to envision that, man. And then, first off, I always feel weird. Like, I want to wash my hands mm-hmm. after I see the ball. But if you see somebody naked balling, then I'm like, I, I got to have Are you just wearing it. shoes then? Uh, you, you have to wear the just shoes. The That's shoes. a very good point, yeah, man. Yeah. It's just the shoes. Never even thought about that. Yes. Wow. Uh, well, let's you know what. Let's go and find out if you they wear what? the shoes. Road trip, Mitchie. Road trip yes. to Pennsylvania, Pittsburgh. Are you right? sitting on the benches to try on the different and, shoes? Oh, I don't even want that either. Is and that then the, the the thing where you dry your hands. You got a buddy up there we can include. Yes. <laughs> Let, let's move away from it. We'll have more flash coming up right after this. Don't go, don't go anywhere. Welcome back to Daily Flash. A website is offering to pay a movie fan $2,000 to watch all of this year's Best Picture Oscar nominees and predict the outcome of the broadcast. TestCasinos.com announced a unique job opportunity for a cinephile willing to watch the 10 nominees for Best Picture, rate each movie, and predict the winners at this year's Mm. Academy Awards. The chosen candidate will receive two grand, a new 65-inch 4K TV, and a $500 DoorDash gift card. Applications are being accepted now through March 9th. I'm loving that. That'd be a fun job to have. I feel like I, I've, I've seen all those movies. Yeah. Can I qualify for yeah, that? Get you a TV <laughs> and you're done, right? I, I'd like that. Looks like a passenger on a plane from Dubai was caught on camera headbutting a flight attendant, Uh-oh. causing crew members to actually tackle him and restrain him with cable ties. The incident actually took place in the business class section of the Emirati's flight to uh, Islamabad. Islamabad. Uh, Islamabad, thank you. In the clip, a tall, thin man is seen headbutting a male flight attendant who is holding him by his collar. Now, the crew members were forced to tie his legs together in an yes. effort to restrain him. After the plane landed, the suspect was then tied to a wheelchair with his hands behind his back. Wow. The number of in-flight attacks has been on the rise since COVID. In 2023, it was at least one incident reported for every 568 flights. And you say 568 flights, but we're talking... That's a lot globally, you know. I mean, how many flights a day take off? Have people just lost their minds on airplanes? I, what is happening? I, the only thing I can attribute maybe some of that to is like it, it's it's expensive to fly. I can give you that. Yes. So you think, well, I'm paying this big amount of money. I want to get everything that I want. If things don't go your way, plus there's a lot of stress that happens when it comes to travel. And I think people just forget. Hey, you know what? Guess what? Everybody else in this thing is going through the same thing you're going through. So keep but that I in mind. But I think there's this weird sense of entitlement. Entitlement, where I sure think that people think if I don't get my way I'm suing and I'll get my way that way and for whatever reason I don't know if it's social media I don't know if it's reality television but it has created this horrible behavior yeah. and knowing that everybody's there's cameras everywhere yeah. uh, my favorite one of the late is the uh, two guys that uh, don't forget about uh, it, they're at the counter and they say what about your dogs what about your dogs uh, Macy and uh, Shelby have you seen this? No. you got to Google this. It is hilarious. <laughs> and he keeps going on. What about Shelby? Think about Shelby. Think about Shelby. It's hilarious. you gotta, got to definitely check it out. All, okay. right? All right. Well, according to a recent poll, 90% of Americans agree that we actually are experiencing a mental health crisis. And most often, we actually treat the symptoms without looking deeper into the root causes of mental health concerns. So joining us right now is Bob Gardner. He is a freedom and transformation specialist with a fresh view on actually how to conquer stress, addiction, and anxiety. Bob, welcome to Daily Flash. So glad to have you here. Uh, Glad to be here. Your first point is actually, it's quite interesting. It's a question, what if there's really nothing wrong with you? Explain that. Yeah, well, in the beginning, you got to remember, I came from a place where I was deeply addicted for 18 years, was suicidal, was depressed. And I was looking at the the reality that all the things that I had tried hadn't worked, that I had spent all of this time and energy and money on things to sort of manage the symptom. And so I started turning the question around and going like, what if the fact that I'm experiencing misery is in an indication that my body and mind are working properly just with the wrong set of data? And that started a whole train of conversation in a different direction. No, no, I, I, I totally, I can see where you're already headed. I can see the road where we're headed, where we're doing this, because that's what happens is our body takes over. Our body knows how to run itself, if you think about it. But explain how does trauma actually begin and then end in the body, and, and can we actually remove it? Yeah. So in the, in the end, when I say, what is trauma or what is addiction or what are all these other things, the question I was asking myself is, how do I know I have it? Right. And when that question is posed, immediately I start looking around and realizing, oh, wow, I'm dealing with 
my breathing is off. I have this gnarly feeling in my gut. My, you know, my eyes are erratic. I feel uncomfortable, but it was all in my body. And I go, well, shoot, I don't experience that all the time. I don't experience trauma all the time. Yeah. So if only this thing in my body, what if I start working with my body and retrain it so that it's reflex reaction to the environment is something totally different. And that's exactly what I did. It seems like a lot of uh, people actually, they look outwardly to find out what's wrong with them. Like something is causing this, like another person or the situation. And you're saying, well, look, maybe it's internal. And maybe if you can figure that out, it'll actually work its way through through the body through this. Am I, am I right in my estimation on that? 100%. And it's natural that we would look outside to blame stuff. We learned it. We watched other people doing it. We absorbed that by some sort of life osmosis going, oh, yeah, if I feel upset, you made me upset. But yeah. the reality is if I had been unconscious and they had done the same thing, I wouldn't have felt upsetness. So obviously the consciousness is doing it. I need to think more of like, what would I do if I was unconscious? <laughs> That's how I need to start thinking. I like that. All right. How do we actually train ourselves to find that happiness on autopilot? Yeah, that's where what I started with was, well, let me just start learning how to manage my mind and my body and my feelings on the inside in a way that I can move them in a direction of goodness, even when the negative stuff hits. So I would start with, oh, well, let me just breathe differently than I'm breathing right now. Let okay. me stand differently than I'm standing right now. And, you know, it's funny, you know, you get upset, but if you just like lay on the ground, it changes the feeling. If you hang yourself upside down, you know, off the couch or something, it's really hard to have an argument in the same way if both of you are upside down. And oh, it's amazing. These little like changes that. can change your life. No, no, to me, honestly, and I'm not making fun, I, that makes sense to me because we get into these modes, all right, because first off, we get into these defense modes. I, I got to protect myself, my being, and that thing. But if you can move yourself and ex take, extract yourself out from that, now I got to think different. I, I don't know where I'm at and I'm going to act different, much like how I act on TV and you would not be on TV if you think about it, right? I mean, you're being seen. So I totally understand that. In your book, Built for Freedom, folks can get it anywhere. Where can they find out more information? You can get it on Amazon. You can get it on my website, thefreedomspecialist.com that's listed there, as well as access to all of our podcasts and other programs, a chance to come to retreats and whatnot. Basically, I am trying to give people the the best that I can give them. And, yeah. and my hope is by the end, they walk away with the sense that, wow, maybe nothing's wrong with me. Maybe I just haven't trained my system to produce anything but thank this. You. Bob, thank you so much. Thefreedomspecialist.com, more after this. Welcome back to Daily Flash, I'm Matt Doolittle. And this is this week's Is It True? And this week I'm asking, is it true that malls are dead? The reason I ask that is that one of the mall's must-haves is on the verge of shutting nearly 500 stores. Now, we all know malls have been on the decline, but one of my favorite retailers might be on the way out. Express, the business casual retailer, is on the verge of closing nearly 500 stores. And you got to think about it, they have a big footprint because they have both a men's and a women's store in most of their location. Their CEO recently said, we're actually actively adjusting our assortment architecture through a better balance in wearing, occasion, price points, and a focus on more casual tops and bottoms, and blah, blah, blah. We don't know how to fix this. In other words, we have no idea what we're doing. The other example is a mall here in Orlando, the Seminole Town Center, recently had its power cut off because they didn't pay their bill. And then the other day, it just came out that Macy's is looking to close 150 of their locations across the country. So I'm asking you guys, are malls dead? Is it true they're dead? And I, I hate that they are because one of my first careers was fashion, uh, at one of the malls here working at Finish Line. Then I worked at a Champs. It was a great place to learn and grow. Yeah. So, you know, guys out there, do you think it's true malls are dead? I think, I think, well, first off, I think they're, they're going to have to have a reincarnation of something, mm -hmm. by, by all means. Mm -hmm. I've been seeing a lot of them turn into health gyms and then also mm -hmm. places where kids can jump around. There's a use for them. Best use I've heard was on the internet. It's like, let's turn them into retirement villages. And, you know, anybody could just go there and retire and you have a food court and that sort of thing or make it some kind of community. It's sad walking through there, though, Matt. You're right. Like, because you see the massiveness and how much, mm -hmm. and then you realize you don't, you don't really need that anymore. And then you look back on our youth, at least mine, like yeah, the mall is everything. that was the thing. I, I think that they're positioned for a comeback. That's just I, me. Yeah. And maybe I'm just optimistic, but I think 
think that what's old is new again. And I think the shopping mall will have a resurgence pretty soon. Because I think people are sort of tiring of the online shopping. Yes, it's convenient. But I think he, eventually you miss that one-on-one -on -one interaction with people. Yeah, and yeah. Going to a store, I did some Christmas shopping and I went to Dillard's and Macy's and it was so nice to actually interact with a salesperson and get you know information and help. It was like, wow, this is such a nice experience. Every 80s movie had a mall in oh it, Oh my right? gosh, well, a mall in a food court. And the, and, but the example is though of, of, of how to revive these though, and especially with all the online shopping, uh -huh. is you at least know what you're getting. I mean, how many times have we all been burned by That's ordering true. stuff and I know for my wedding coming up we've ordered a bunch of stuff online and I got to tell you it did not look feel or smell like the pictures <laughs> or anything that it described <laughs> and we've had to send it back wait another week and, you know we're you know a few days out here and I'm going to the mall to buy most of what I need now and it's tough to find it that's a great point. I think yeah. I think what they're going to need to do is because you're not going to get a 100% occupancy as far as stores go, but in Oklahoma City and I'm sure there's other places doing this, they put a, an aquarium in the mall uh, and because they know like okay uh, you know yes. it, 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 because like when we get you hung out at the mall, well now you have the aquarium, but yes. then you can also have some shopping. So you have to have uh, an anchor it, tenant. It, it, it kind of bringing you in, yeah. Anchor yeah, tenant. we have one of those here. They've got the Crayola experience oh, at one go. of the shopping malls, and then another one just opened up. Um, what is like a movie studio? So they've got different sets where you can Heard go and that. shoot certain things. So they're trying to create, uh, you know, that anchor tenant, that go to, and while you're there, you can do the can other check shopping. That out. Yeah. yeah, and then this, the, the little kiosks can be just about anything. True. Anyway, all right, Matt. So I say uh, they are dying. I don't. I think they will have a resurgence, though. They're, there's, it's too yeah. much. Real estate. They're, you know on, what I'm they're, they're being resuscitated. Exactly. That's All right. My hope. All right. Well, let us know what you think too. Head over to dailyflashshow.com. Send us an email and let us know. Do you think it's true malls are dying or not? All right. All right, Matt, good stuff. Well, Machine Gun Kelly fans are mourning the loss of his Cleveland-inspired chest tattoos, and others are accusing him of cultural appropriation after he recently revealed that he covered his upper torso with a massive black tattoo. The Grammy-nominated rapper showed off his new ink on Instagram. The photo shows Kelly wow. revealing his upper chest and most of his arms blacked out in ink. The 33-year-old baffled fans after covering up his colorful tribute to his hometown of Cleveland, Ohio that featured area codes in interstates. <laughs> uh, that's a lot of ink. Yeah. Uh, I, I mean, that's what, I guess, what, 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 what it what used to look, look like now. Like, yeah. And I, I, I'm sorry, I can't, the cultural appropriation, I can't say you do it. It, it, it. Lots of guys black out their their, their tattoos that they don't want, but yeah. usually it's a reasoning behind it. And that, that had to have taken just, imagine how long it did to just do that, uh, first off. I don't know about the tattoo. Do you have any tattoos? I do not have tattoos. I, I do not like needles. No, no, I can't imagine how much pain might have been involved in that whole tattoo process. That's what process. I say. Now, let me, let me tell you this, though. And I don't know why. I, I, I would love to be the guy that can take two co companies or two industries and kind of put them together. These folk, The tattoo folks and the EpiPen folks <laughs> need to get together. I had to do the EpiPen about two weeks ago, yes. and I was scared to death, and so my wife had to do it, and then she did it. I'm like, all right, we'll do it. And she goes, I already did it. And I'm like, I, you can't feel it at all. So oh. why can't we make a tattoo gun that you can't feel? Am I right? I did. You're right. All right. That's where we forget going to the moon. We need a tattoo gun that doesn't hurt. And we'll have more tattoos everywhere. What if we get a ta what if we get a tattoo gun that can also prevent allergies? I'm I'm all game for that. That's that's wonderful. The epitap. The epitap. <laughs> Actually, that's, I love that name, the Epi <laughs> Right? We're buying that domain. Sorry, forget it, guys. That's our domain. We have more Flash coming up right around here. You're watching television's Daily Flash, trending news and entertainment. This is Daily Flash with your hosts, Andrea Jackson and Mitch English. Trending news and entertainment. This is Daily Flash. Hi everyone, I'm Andrea Jackson. I'm Mitch English, welcoming you to Daily Flash. Halfway through the week, we're so mm -hmm. glad to have you along here. You know, we have jobs where we talk all the time, and I was, uh, I'm actually like learning more about how to be a better listener, and I think it helps you in every relationship that you have, you can imagine that. And I came across some research that I thought was kind of interesting, is that we are actually better listeners when we close our eyes. And uh, oh, a lot of it is, 
and that's why you're always uh, you're either falling asleep or whatever. <laughs> uh, because of that, our, our visual con, uh, con mm. cortex that we use when you're talking, somebody's mm -hmm. talking, you're paying attention to their lips and what they're doing, maybe their facial stuff. So you're using that part of brain where you could be actually using for listening. So if you're using just your or, uh, oral cortex, mm -hmm. then you're able to absorb more of it according to research on that. Now, did you get anything I said on that? I did. Around? I got oral tool research. <laughs> See? She was listening at least <laughs> but to I will, try that. I will say this, like when they say if somebody loses like their sense of um, smell or their sight or their hearing, their other senses are amplified. Yeah. So by closing my eyes, I felt like my hearing was more amplified. And, and it makes complete sense, mm -hmm. right? Because you're, it, now your brain only has to concentrate on one yeah. of those sort of things. And um, I think maybe we're in an age now where, because everything, when we do meetings or whatever, we used to do it on phones. Now we're in front of a camera. Mm -hmm. we have, we're have we looking. And nine times out of 10, I'm looking at myself. I, I have two mm -hmm. monitors. I now put my self on another monitor so I don't see myself because otherwise I'll be looking at it oh my god right here then I'm not listening at all because you're paying more right? attention to yourself but now of we course. have to keep our eyes open yes. and so you think all this all this information is coming in for you just to process something that you, it makes it harder to do so well, keep that in mind for more than a century it has been cr a crime to cheat on your spouse in the state of New York but adultery may soon be legal in the Empire State thanks to a proposed bill that would do away with an old law that comes with three months of jail time adultery bans are still in the books and several states across the U.S., though charging and convicting someone has rarely happened. They were traditionally enacted to reduce the number of divorces at a time when a cheating spouse was the only way to secure a legal split. Only about a dozen people have been charged under New York's law since 1972, and of those, just five cases resulted in convictions. Most states that have adultery laws classify them as misdemeanors, but Oklahoma, Wisconsin, and Michigan list adultery as a felony offense. Interesting. Uh, here's the thing. Can you imagine the lawmakers that are really pushing this? Hey, we we, we got to get this uh, adultery cheat thing off the legal. law. Why? Why are you so <laughs> adamant about exactly. this? Like the most famous cheating stories come out of there, like Anthony Weiner and you know all those yeah. really, yes. high end politicians up there. Like, but I feel like you always see that that storyline in the movies, especially if it's in New York, where somebody's trying to get a divorce and they can't unless they catch their spouse cheating, uh, uh, right? And, yeah. Yeah. You could see that as being you know, applied. You are hire thing. a private eye to find yeah, out if your spouse is cheating. Wanna, no, yeah, I want to find out. Okay, so maybe uh, an unwanted uh, house guest could be an issue uh, mm. causing divorce, but a totally different unwanted house guest is happening in North Carolina where wildlife officials there are now warning residents just to be aware of unusual hazards in the area. Bears waking up underneath their homes. Ooh. Officials have noticed an uptick in bears making their winter homes under houses and decks. Wildlife officers have been known to relocate these furry tenants, except for the mom, uh, mama bears with young cubs. Some experts say that the fun part of the job is actually to convince a homeowner that it's actually okay to have a bear live <laughs> under their house for the winter. Bears usually vacate their winter dens voluntarily late March, early April. If you know anything about that, they hibernate inside there, not bothering anybody. Uh, I would still be worried. Hey, boo -boo. Hey, boo -boo. Uh. But when it finally does wake up, you know, the, the video we showed you that saw him taking off, but they're like, oh, I'm tired, man, I'm hungry. Where do we got? Yeah. Where's where's that cat where's I kept hearing for the past six months? <laughs> Here's an opportunity. Yeah. You set up a webcam. Oh, and watch it, yeah. And there you go. I mean, I, not idea. that you want to disturb the bear at all, but it's fascinating, you right? You around with socks on the whole time in your house or yeah. like tiptoe if you're like, I don't wake that thing Why up. are you being so quiet? I got a bear downstairs. I got a bear downstairs. <laughs> well, Matt lived in our basement for a while. I had a camera on him. Not as exciting as you thought it would no, be. No bears there. came to no, visit? Well, <laughs> I started an OnlyFans page while well, I was down there, though. <laughs> well, he, he was... <laughs> Uh, we got more flash coming up. I'm so uh, monitoring myself. We'll be back after this. Spring is just a few weeks away, and lifestyle editor Joanne Butler has some amazing beauty deals to get you ready for the new season. Oh, hi, thanks for having me. Well, let's start with skincare. Nothing rejuvenates your skin and leaves it prepped for the new season quite like a chemical peel. Uh, what it does is essentially speeds up that natural exfoliation process our skin already goes through on its own and just leaves it looking fresh and glowing. It can also help improve the appearance of fine lines and wrinkles and acne, discoloration, rosacea, even some sensitive skin conditions. And National Peel Day is March 10th and Massage Envy, you may know them for fabulous massages, but 
they're also a leader in skincare with great facials and derma planning and chemical peels. And they're having some great deals just in time for National Peel Day. Uh, and they're using these PCA skin products, which are just really special and unique ingredient blends that deliver a comfortable treatment experience without sacrificing efficacy. Uh, they have expert estheticians too that customize your treatment depending on your goals and your skin type. And after your service, they'll even send you home with complimentary PCA skin products to protect your investment. So just great stuff. Now's the perfect time to treat yourself too because from March 10th through the 24th, they're giving away a full-size daily exfoliant worth $46 when you spend 150 or more on PCA skin products at participating Massage Envy locations. Now let's talk hair care. After a cold, harsh winter, your hair can often feel dry, dull, and damaged. And Pantene is always my go-to there. And they have two amazing new shampoo and conditioning collections right at Costco that just give your hair the springtime shine, hydration, and protection it deserves full of high-end skincare inspired ingredients like pro-vitamin B5 and keratin, coconut oil, and vitamin E that just nourish your hair, make it super shiny, soft, and hydrated. Uh, the first collection is the Multitasker 10. Now this actually does 10 things at once. It repairs up to six months of damage. And through March 17th, they're having a special deal at Costco. And then the other is the new essential botanical strawberry and coconut milk. This is derm tested, sulfate free. It has a delicious berry and coconut scent and just drenches your hair in softness. Just a whole shower experience too, because it smells just amazing. Again, both of these can be uh, had at Costco. Talk about luxe for less here. And you can do a lot with those savings. You know, you can buy something new for your spring wardrobe. Speaking of which, it's all about denim come spring head to toe denim, especially blue. Uh, we're also seeing a lot of metallics. Metallics are making a comeback. Gold, silver, you name it. So sparkle and shine and uh, denim for spring. And there you have it. Happy spring. Thank you there, Joanne. A little trending news here. This is really inspiring. An 81-year-old Texas man, he received his personal training certification, a certification rather, at age 73, and he's now been named the world's oldest fitness instructor, Tim Menick. He teaches class at Gold's Gym. It's in Austin, Texas. The senior fitness guru started working as an instructor after getting his certification from the National Academy of Sports Medicine. He said that he was actually looking for something to, oh, I just want to stay active after his wife died. Menick said that he actually teaches students of all ages, but most of them are actually 50. The oldest is 95. Tim says that we actually start losing muscle. Guess what age? 30. 35. No way. That's when we start losing muscle. So unless wow. we stay active, we lose it. We become flabby and that sort of thing. And it tells you that, that you know, it, keeping the mind active is mm -hmm. is the most act is the most is the most beneficial. 100%. And when you're sitting around not doing anything, just go out and try to do something. And imagine when you get to an age where you're like, you know, I've always wanted to do this, which it sounds like this is what he wanted mm -hmm. to do. Why not? do it and you know it doesn't matter what age you are or a stage of life you're in you could actually accomplish any kind of goal you look at him he's 81 but he looks better than most 50 year old <laughs> looks men better right than now. me for sure <laughs> i mean it's unbelievable but it's true it's you always hear that adage move it or lose it yeah. and it and it really has different meanings for different people at different stages of their life 100 percent. we are but though we're standing still mm -hmm. right right now we will be back and we're actually mm -hmm. i'm going to get jackson and i we're going to run around the building just to stay just active. do a lap yeah. get our that? energy going that's right here on daily flash see if we're out of breath when we return. this spring forget sacrificing quality for savings because we've got the inside scoop on how to shop the best beauty buys of the season you know without blowing your budget here to tell us about it is beauty expert millie almodovar hey millie Hi, thanks for having me. Well, the start of a new season is the perfect time to revamp your beauty routine and replenish your favorites. CVS Pharmacy, one of the largest and most trusted beauty retailers in the country, is kicking off spring with their semi-annual epic beauty sale now through April 27th to help you save big. Now, Bubble is a brand that I have been seeing absolutely everywhere. And I have to say, I absolutely love their Slam Dunk Hydrating Face Moisturizer. It's so soothing, ultra hydrating, and just leaves my skin feeling so soft. Now, if you love the look of a fuller lip, the Maybelline Lifter Plump Gloss is a game changer for instantly plumped lips that last. Also, 
The Zit Sticker Killer Acne Extra Strength Patches are my favorite acne patch on the market. They're five times stronger and faster acting than any other product like it. Now for hair care, I love Myel's Rosemary Mint Light Scalp and Hair Strengthening Oil. It has rosemary, mint, biotin, it smells so amazing and it just leaves your hair feeling so soft and luxurious. And finally, we all know how important it is to wear SPF every single day. And my current favorite is the Sunbums Daily SPF 50 Face Lotion. It's ultra lightweight and it absorbs quickly into skin, making it a perfect option to use under makeup. Now, here's how the sale works. From now through April 27th, you're gonna shop with your extra care card and you can earn more than $100 extra bucks every week. If you don't have an extra care card, don't worry about it. You can get one for free. Just go to cvs.com slash extra care or sign up in store and be sure to check out cvs.com slash epic beauty. Come in store or browse your CVS Pharmacy app to see for yourself before April 27th. CVS even has a convenient buy online, pick up in store option to make your shopping experience easier and stress free. LG has just announced its donation of $100,000 to the National Alliance on Mental Illness, known as NAMI, at the NCAA Final Four Basketball Championship weekend. The donation marks LG's continued commitment to advocating for assistance systems and nurturing and encouraging conversations about mental health challenges among college athletes. LG is excited to use the power of our NCAA partnership to support student athletes in all aspects of their lives. We're doing so in a variety of ways, such as elevating awareness of the importance of their mental health. LG's Transparent Conversations podcast series aims to do this by helping foster conversations around the overall wellness of student athletes, both physical and mental. The third season of Transparent Conversations is debuting here at the Final Four with recordings of two new episodes. I hope that there's uh, you know, growth uh, and, and that some positivity comes out of this and, and sparking uh, ideas and discussion about just the struggles that student athletes go through and uh, the pressure and stress that they're under. These LG Transparent Conversations are just so critically important. I feel that way always once I leave them because it is so clear that the athletes that we have participate feel so heard and seen. What drives me, I want to see my young men that I coach go on and, and have families and, and be productive people in society and, and have great opportunities to maybe play professionally. We are honored to announce today our collaboration with the NCAA to launch LG's inaugural Life's Good Coaches Award. This program will celebrate coaches that create a nurturing and a positive environment for their student athletes. Well, the Life's Good Coaches Award is, is a great way to uh, support student athletes. And I've been on both sides of that, so I understand the importance of, of mental health. And uh, so it's a really important issue. And LG is a leader. They're setting the tone and they're executing. And they're demonstrating it by having us as a partner and making this wonderful donation of $100,000 to help us do our work. Well, being in center court where the final four is going to be played for the men and having a check presentation on behalf of mental health support, it doesn't get better than that. Beyonce's new country song, Texas Hold'em, is burning up the charts and sparking a Western takeover. Check out this fan video inspired by her new tune. Beyonce just became the first black female artist with a number one on the Billboard Hot Country Songs chart with her latest tune. Her lean into Western style is actually inspiring a resurgence in Western fashion trends all across social media. That's, of course, thanks to other pop culture trendsetters like Pharrell and Lil Nas X. From bolo ties to cowboy hats and some boots, look at that. Style experts say that Beyonce has actually launched Western wear back into the spotlight. Her fans are lighting up social media with their take on the cowboy contour with the caption, if Bay goes country, we go country. Expect to see more felt cowboy hats, flannel shirts, denim, and red, white, and blue. Beyonce's new country album is going to be released a little bit later on this month. Her two songs, Texas Hold'em and 16 Carriages, are actually the first two ahead of the LP's debut. Beyonce isn't the only pop artist taking a spin into the country music territory. Lana Del Rey just announced that her next LP is called Lasso. It's going to be all country. 
And I've said it many times, <laughs> uh, country music has the most dedicated fan base yeah. out of any, if you say that. And, and, and it's also, uh, some say that it's closer to whole, right now it is at least, wholesome to, to uh, down home roots and that sort of thing. But uh, I think as country progresses on, just as it has since the 90s, it goes into a different direction. And, you know, I, I don't know what the controversy is about Beyonce doing this uh, no. at all. And so many people getting all so upset about it. And you, you think about how many crossover artists there have been, yeah. all the way from like, uh, Amy Grant, uh, Taylor Swift, Avril Lavigne started off, believe it or not, country Did a long time really? ago. Katy Perry was uh, was uh, Christian yeah, music, and right. music takes you to wherever you are. And I, I think people are just taking this a little too out of hand, you know. Well, I, and and part of it, I think maybe it's a little bit manufactured controversy to yeah. sell records and to get her to the top of the chart. Makes the sense. song is super catchy, and everywhere on social media, people are doing their dances to the song. So there is not an issue with her song being popular or being popular 100%. in country. It's beyond popular. Clearly, she's got the number one song. Absolutely. And I think these artists are smart. I always think of Pitbull because he's one of those guys who collaborates with whoever's really hot at the moment, and he's good at doing that crossover yeah. uh, music, and it makes him uh, enjoyable and likable and popular across all different genres uh, when he does those songs. Tammy Wynette and KLF, remember that? Uh, when they made that? Yes. Did you see uh, George and Tammy? Oh, like, so she funny. caught all kinds of hell for going the other direction. Yes, I mean, like, right. and she's like, I don't care, music's music. And, As it should be. And they made her, like, she was the country music queen. So, anyway, it's a cool song. Yeah, Look it great. up. More Flash coming up right after this. Welcome back to The Big Show. He's Knuff already <laughs> for the Academy Awards. Yes. We're talking about Ryan Gosling. He's actually going to perform his Oscar-nominated Barbie song, I'm Just Ken, at the upcoming 96th <laughs> ceremony. Gosling said he initially thought of turning down the role of Ken in the Barbie movie, which has grossed already $1.4 billion. Jeez. Here's a fun fact. The mink that Ken wears is actually a tribute to the 80s era of Sylvester oh, Stallone. Really? Gosling also said he got a lot of inspiration for his version of Ken from watching The <laughs> Bachelorette. I love that. All right, Oscar's coming up uh, March 10th, so you can check this that Sunday. out. There he is, right there. Yeah. 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 Uh, I, I, and everybody forgets he was in Mickey Mouse Club, and he's was so he's he saying, really? yeah, and with Britney and all them stuff. He was a oh he was a Mouseketeer. It, which, because you look at him, you're like, he's a good looking guy, so he's an actor. But yeah. he can act, we know that he can sing and yeah. act and, and dance and do all that stuff. I have the biggest crush. He's one of my movie crushes. I love him. That movie, Crazy Stupid Love. Yes. I am so in love with that character. He was so good in that movie. And I feel like he's good in everything. He is, I would think, and uh, when I, I did the junket for, the, for that one, yes. and he was there, and he brought his dog. And his dog was just as chill as he was. But the whole time, I'm like just looking down, he, he was like, he needed the dog there. It like felt a comfort. like like a comfort thing. Like he was uncomfortable. Kind. Of, I felt the vibe that he. he I don't. Not that I make people uncomfortable. Maybe no, I do. No, but maybe just the junket just in like, general. Yeah, it's like, hey, I got to do this. I'm, I'm, yeah. I want to get out. But this dog was just this gorgeous golden retriever, and it was amazing. If I recall, he and Rachel McAdams dated for a while. That sounds right. Wasn't yeah. she in that one like um, real depressing movie about the couple? I can't think of it. And, but anyway, I remember we were talking about them possibly. The Notebook. The notebook. Yes, Thank okay. you, The Notebook. And I remember us talking about them potentially being engaged. And we got a message from someone, a viewer. And I always wondered if it was Ryan Gosling saying, um, you should do your research because they're not really engaged. And I'm like, who would know that? <laughs> if, if either the publicist or, or Ryan himself. I'm yeah. thinking about probably the publicist. Probably, like, yeah. And you know, I think, honestly, he, he seems to me he's just a normal, cool guy that yeah. just has a cool job. And he enjoys what he does. Yeah. And uh, I, oh, he, he's going to be uh, Clint, uh, Colt Seavers in The Fall Guy oh, as well. Yeah, that's right. That movie's coming yes. out soon too. So excited oh, about I that! I can't wait to see that. Yes, <laughs> love it. Oh my goodness! Got excited. Just came in my mind. <laughs> that does it for our show. Thank you so much for yes. joining and spending time with us. Yeah. For more information on any of today's stories, be sure to visit our website, DailyFlashShow.com. We'll have everything there for you, from the interviews to all the information. We'll be there for you too. Y'all take good. care. We'll see you when we look at you. Bye bye.